Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. And today we have an hour together for chair yoga. So gather around anything you might need for your practice. Make sure that the chair you're on is stable and comfortable and that you've got a little bit of space around you so when you move, you're not bumping yourself. If you need to sit into the back of your chair for your comfort and support, please go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I encourage you to sit forward just a little, even if you come forward and back into that support throughout the class, just to start to tap into and wake up the muscles that help with our core stability. Feet are a comfortable distance apart, whatever that means to you. It's gonna be different for each of us. And this class is about figuring out what works for your body in this moment. So kind of starting the class with a beginner's mind. So we don't have any expectations of ourselves. And that way, as we progress through the class, you kind of learn to tune into whether it feels right to you or not. And if there's something else you can adapt or change, for it to feel better for you. There's no right and wrong here, so don't think that it has to look a particular way. We're all put together differently and um, different movements feel very different to all of us. So just make sure you're honoring how it is that your body is feeling today. And if at any point you need to do less or take a rest or even pause the video and come back to it, please again honor that. That's simply a really great way of taking care of yourself. So when you're ready, we'll root down into those feet. And if you want to, to start, you can pick up the toes or the balls of the feet or even the heels and just wake up the soles of the feet, even patting them down a little. We spend so much of our energy and our time way up in our head. It's really great to go the furthest away from our head that we can find all the way down into the feet. And then feel the support underneath your feet, whatever that may be. Feel the texture of it, but ultimately that understanding that the earth is underneath us and holding us. You could even imagine if you like roots growing downwards into the earth, just like a tree, to get that sense of grounding. And all that grounding means is that we get that sense of support, that's it. People often ask me um, what this magical grounding is, and it's just realizing that we have support underneath our body and trusting that support. So when we're rooting down through our feet, you can even press down a little bit into your feet to, and you might start to notice a waking up through the legs as that happens. Take a breath in and on an exhale, release any tension that may have been held there. And then we'll take our awareness to our seat. Take your awareness into the seat, into the chair underneath you. And we do the same thing here. It's the same quality of just seeking out that support, trusting it, and sitting deeply into it. Mm -hmm. And then from there, from the pelvis downwards, we're rooted downwards with that awareness to go downwards. And then from the pelvis upwards, we're lifting up through the spine, even if it's in your imagination, lifting up as each as if each vertebrae you get a little bit of space in between them, to the base of the skull, to the crown of the head. And the shoulders are soft and back and down, but nothing is forced here, everything's easy. And there's a quality of widening through the collarbones. And if anything doesn't make any sense to you, then just, then don't worry about it, just scoot on over to the next thing. So from here we have the rooting, feet and seat. We have the lifting from there, so rooting to rise. And then take a full breath in. Exhale it out, long and slow. Uh -huh. We've got another few of those. Feel free to close your eyes or lower or soften your gaze. And start to allow those exhales to kind of soften your day so far. So we start to drop into this moment. We're starting to feel the different support underneath us. 
And then without needing to do anything, just simply check in and notice how you're feeling today. Notice how you're feeling in the space that you're in. And you might even want to orientate yourself to the day, the month, you know, time is strange right now. And just check in with whatever arises. Not needing anything to be one way or another. Again, no right and wrong here. This is about just tuning in. Notice all the thoughts that are present. And we can normally tap in quite easily to the thoughts that come and go. And let them run their course just being aware. And then see if you can drop your awareness from your mind down into your heart space or at a place lower down in your body that may feel like center to you. And rather than the thoughts, notice how you're feeling. And then tap into the sensations of your body. Maybe starting at the soles of your feet, taking your awareness there, notice sensation. That support underneath you, the touch that you have. And then allow that awareness to rise up through your body slowly, paying attention as it goes paying attention to places where you have stories, where the sensations are loud, but also paying attention to the quieter places until you get all the way up to the crown of your head. Any tension you may have noticed and see if there's anything you can offer yourself to allow that tension to dissolve, even just 1%. Maybe a simple movement of your body or a few breaths, allowing those exhales to give you some softness. And then start to tap into your breath. Maybe bringing your lips together, breathing in and out through your nose, but only if it's comfortable for you. Allowing your breath to get a little longer on the inhale and exhale. But again, no forcing. There's no way the breath has to be. Steadying the breath out as best as you can. On the inhale, all the way to the top, and on the exhale, all the way down to the bottom. And then I invite you to listen to the sound of your breath, the sound of the inhale and the sound of the exhale. And I offer you the mantra, so hum. So on the inhale, blending with the sound of your inhale, silently the sound so inside and on the exhale, hum, allowing the so to fill the exhale all the way to the top and the hum to blend with the sound of the exhale. I'm trying to keep the breath, the mantra, as smooth and as steady as you can allow it to be. And why we use a mantra is because literally the translation is a tool for the mind. So we give the mind something to do and it doesn't go off quite so easily into those loops of thoughts that we have. And it will happen but then we bring it back gently to the mantra, so hum. 
and the sound. So hum is said to be the sound of the breath itself coming in and out. So it's an easy mantra to stay with. If you have another mantra that you prefer or a sound or even counting one, two, anything at all, it really doesn't matter what it is. You can go ahead with that. So hum. Staying with that breath, with that mantra, letting go of any forcing of the breath at all. Even if it means the breath becomes smaller. Notice how on the hum, the exhale can allow your body, your mind, your thoughts, your heart to feel ease. Like a soft sigh, hum. And that's the breath we'll keep for the rest of the practice. If you have another breath course that feels better for you, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, so hum breath, we're gonna root down through our feet. Notice our seat and rise from there. So hum breath. And then from there, we're gonna take that right hand down. And then we're going to circle through the wrist. So, hum. One circle to one cycle of breath. And then we'll take that round in the opposite direction. Noticing your wrists, your fingers, your thumbs. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take that elbow up. We're going to circle in bigger circles from the elbow. So, hum. As if we're swishing that hand slowly through water. Going around in the opposite direction. That elbow does not have to be high. Again, adjusting and adapting things for you. Nice. And then from there, taking that thumb to the front. We're going to inhale up and exhale down. Soft movements. Inhaling up, exhaling down. You can keep this circle as big or as small as you like. If you want to add on, you can allow those circles to get bigger. Keep the heart facing forward. So hum on the breath. Noticing sensations, always adjusting the movement for your body. And then we'll take that round in the opposite direction. You can start easy, start small. So, hum. Exhale, we'll take that arm down back to support. Any circles through the shoulders, go ahead. And then from here, taking that left arm out, circling through the left wrist. So, hum. Notice sensations back in the opposite direction. So, hum. Notice where the effort is and allow those exhales to offer you some softness. From here, we're gonna take that elbow up and circle. So hum. Notice where the effort is in this and notice the ease. Back in the opposite direction. And then from there, the arm comes down. So up it comes, hum down. So hum. Keeping the joints nice and easy. And again, the torso is nice and stable. Maybe reaching with those fingertips with the joints, depending on your range of motion. No right and wrong here. Notice if there's an area you're rushing through, see if you can smooth it out. And then we'll go around in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Slow and steady, so hum breath. 
and the breath is guiding the movement. One more to go. I'm going to take both hands down, circle through the shoulders, both circles, both shoulders at the same time. So hum. And then round in the opposite direction when you're ready. Notice the effort of the movement and notice the ease too. See if you can balance the two out. The inhale is always a little bit more effort. And then we'll take those arms down and back to support. From here, at the very tip of your nose, we're going to circle through the neck, inhaling and exhaling. So hum. Again, being fully aware of the sensations, adjusting and adapting the movement to suit you in this moment. Back in the opposite direction when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Two more. The end of the exhale, coming all the way back up to center. Hands are on the thighs for support. And this is a great time if you're sitting into the back of your chair, you can slide forward a little as we get into seated cat and cow. On the inhale, drawing the heels of the hands back, elbows come back, heart comes forward. We've got extension in the spine here. Exhaling, pushing the fingertips towards the knees, drawing the belly in, and we've got flexion of the spine. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. We're not trying to get the most out of the movement here. We're trying to allow the movement to blend with the so hum breath. If you want to add on, getting into the cervical spine, we're lifting up on the inhale, exhale, chin comes into the chest. On that inhale, consider lifting the forehead up more rather than compressing the back of the skull towards the top of the shoulders. Getting into the lower back, we're tilting the pelvis forward on the inhale, sending that tailbone out behind us on the exhale, tucking the tailbone, coming over onto the back of the pelvis any amount. And you get to adjust and play with this. So hum, effort and ease. And this may have changed with sensation. Notice where it feels easier for you and where it feels more challenging. No judgment, no stories as to why, just being curious. Inhaling and exhaling. Effort and ease. Another two here. Staying for the last exhale. And coming all the way back up to center. Take a big breath in. Exhale. That's the ease. Two more just like that. Last one. Mm -hmm. And then from here, we're gonna turn our whole body, keeping the chair exactly as it is, over towards the right side. And you may need to slide forward on your chair, depending on how high the chair is and how long your bones are to get that real grounding through your feet. Again, no right and wrong. And if it feels better to put something under your feet, like some um, like a firmly rolled towel or something to bring the floor up to you, then that's an option too. Feet are a comfortable distance for you. Rooting down through your feet, your seat, and we're lifting from there. So hum breath. Tune in, notice how you're feeling. I can't emphasize enough how much it, um, we can never do that enough. Tuning in and noticing how we're feeling. 
From here, we're going to root through our feet, lifting up on the inhale and on the exhale, we're going to turn towards the back of the chair. Now, depending on your range of motion, that left hand can come over onto the right thigh. It can come over onto the back of the chair. That right hand can also adjust on the back of the chair, or depending on what feels more comfortable, it can come behind you, depending on the kind of chair you're on. So on the inhale, we root down and lift up. On the exhale, opportunity to turn to the right. Inhaling, we come out. Exhaling, soften or deepen into that twist. Inhaling and exhaling. And we can use the hands as leverage a little, but we're not yanking ourselves around by any means. An even better option could be floating the hands and twisting from there. Inhaling, lifting, exhaling, twisting. Option to stay pulsing like this. Option to pause three breaths. You can even glance over that right shoulder if you like. Inhaling and exhaling. So hum breath. Root down through your feet, your seat. And on that exhale, we're deepening or softening the twist. We've got more or less one more breath to go. And then we inhale and come back to center. Beautifully done. Take a big breath in, exhale it out. And from here, taking that right hand on the back of the chair for support, we'll slide over towards the front of the chair, taking our whole left seat off the chair. And if this is not stable or steady for you, then maybe this isn't for you. Otherwise, from here, keeping that stability through the right hand on the chair, we're going to take that left knee down, toes tucked or untucked. You can always put some softness underneath the top of the foot if that suits you. From here, rooting down into your support, always adjusting yourself to feel more um, stable. Rooting down into your support, we're lifting up from there. And from here, just play with the tilt of your pelvis here, tucking and untucking the tailbone, just to notice how that feels. Gentle movements. And then from there, we come to a neutral place where it feels like we're most stable. Rooting down, keeping the um, pelvis exactly as you chose, the option here is to draw that left leg back a little more. And if by doing that you're tilting the pelvis forward, come back to where you previously were. This is about finding out your range of motion and getting in through the hip flexors on the front of that left leg. Again, neutral spine, rooting to rise. Root deeply into the support underneath you and lift from there, just like when we were seated. Now tune into how much effort you're putting in here and see if you can match that with ease by softening. So if you, what you're finding is you're at 90% effort here and 10% ease, see if you can do anything to adjust that so it becomes effort and ease. If you're adding on, that left arm can come up. You can take the back of the skull with the left hand and that elbow comes out. Great option to stay here. If you feel stable and steady and the breath is still that so hum breath, slide that left hand down towards the shoulder blades. Depending on the length of your arms, option if you feel stable enough to take the right hand to the upper elbow and over we come towards the um, back of the chair. So hum. If those ribs are sticking out, drawing them in. Effort and ease here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Be completely honest with yourself, and if you need to back off and do less, please do. 
Two more breaths. Staying for the last exhale. Inhale, we're coming up and releasing the hands. That left hand comes back onto the left thigh. And then we'll draw that left leg forward. Sitting back onto the chair, take a big breath in. Exhale it out. Uh -huh. And then from here, coming all the way back to center. And over we come towards the left. And again, any adjustments you need to make here, sliding forward on your chair, putting something underneath your feet to bring the floor to you, go ahead and do that. So, inhaling and exhaling. We're rooting to rise, coming back to that stable breath. Right hand comes over onto the left thigh. Well, depending on the kind of chair you have or how long your bones are, you can come over onto the back of the chair. Right hand can join it or it can come back behind you. Well, left hand can come and join it, sorry. Rooting to rise. That's the inhale, so hum breath. On the exhale, we're pulsing to the back of the chair. Inhaling, coming forward. Exhaling, softening or deepening into the twist. Your feet and seat are rooted down, so the twist is coming from the spine. And you can use your hands as a little bit of gentle leverage. As long as the breath is steady, so hum breath, you've got that effort and ease in the movement. And the option is to hover those hands, and then the muscles, and not your hands, are doing the work for you. Glance over that left shoulder if that's there for your range of motion in the neck. Option to keep pulsing. Option to stay three breaths in the twist. Every inhale we root to rise on the exhale there's an opportunity to soften or deepen into that twist. Staying for the last exhale and then we're inhaling, coming back to center. Taking a big breath in, exhaling it out. Uh -huh. And then from here, that left hand's coming onto the back of the chair. And option to slide the right sit bones off the chair entirely. Although the feet are still at a comfortable distance. Always making sure that your number one um, agenda is that you feel safe and stable. From here, taking that little right knee down, toes tucked or untucked to make any adjustments you need here. Start off small, the further forward that knee is, the easier it is, the further back it is, the more challenging it is for the thigh and through the hip flexors here. It's not a movement we often do in everyday life, so this can be challenging for us. Notice if your pelvis is coming forward to simply bring the knee further forward too so we can stay at a more neutral place. And you can play with that tilting the pelvis anterior and posterior tilts and then coming to a place that it feels stable and steady for you. Playing with sending the right foot back a little bit or bringing it forward Tune into your breath here. So hum breath. Notice the amount of effort you're putting in and see if you can balance up the effort and ease. Option to stay here, rooting into that support. Option to take that right arm up and tuck it, that hand behind the head. We're opening up through that elbow. Effort and ease on the breath. So hum. Option to stay here. If you don't need the support of your left hand on the chair, you can option to play with taking the right elbow and drawing the hand down and back towards the shoulder blades. Option to stay here, stay neutral, or option to draw yourself all the way over towards the back of the chair, any amount. Effort and ease in the breath. Be honest with yourself. 
check in and notice what it is that you need here. Another two breaths, rooting to rise, tuning into sensation. The last exhale, and on the inhale, we're coming up. The hands are released, drawing that right leg forward, sitting onto the chair, and then sliding ourselves all the way back to center. Any adjustments you need to make in your body to find it a little bit um, less tension, go ahead and do that. We're going to take a big breath in. Exhale it out. Nicely done. And then from there, maybe coming more forward on your chair or back, depending on the support you need. And then we're going to heel toe that right leg out towards the right side. Keeping the pelvis as neutral as possible. Option to stay here. And that right foot, again, if you need to bring the floor up to you by sliding over towards the right or um, padding underneath that right foot for support, go ahead. Great place to be right here. Torso is facing the front of the chair. So hum breath. Now option to stay here. Option to slide the left leg forward. Foot is rooted to the floor. Leg does not have to be straight. Option to slide it off towards the side and to the front. So we've got a diagonal going on here. Inhaling and exhaling. Depending on the support you need of your chair, you could stay here. Now again, depending on the length of your bones, you could slide all the way over to the left side so that left hip is completely off the chair, supported by that right thigh. And again, you can prop underneath that right foot if that's helpful. Let me bring the left leg back. That's the last option, but the toes are turned in. That internally rotates that um, left leg. So the pelvis is slightly turned over towards the front leg, but we're drawing the left shoulder back. There's a whole lot going on here. You can take a bend into that back leg. Again, take what it is that you need here to feel stable and to feel comfortable. It's not gonna look the same for all of us, but we're rooting wherever we are, wherever that leg is, to rise through the spine. Supported warrior two. Option to take the arms out, shoulder height. Rolling the shoulders back and down. Reaching with the fingertips. Drawing the front ribs in, which we've just done earlier. And here we are, supported warrior two. The last option here is to gaze over those right fingertips. Now from here, so hum on the breath. Tune into the sensations of your body. Effort and ease. So if you're just hanging out here and it's 100% ease, consider rooting down more into the support underneath you. You could even consider really activating the legs as if you were going to hover off the chair. Effort and ease. Find the balance. From here, on a, I'm pulsing with the breath, turning that right palm up, left palm comes down, inhaling, we're exalting the warrior two, exhaling, coming back to warrior two, inhaling, exhaling, so we're pulsing. Nothing is changing in the lower body. Effort and ease, so hum on the breath. Option to add on. The inhale, we're exalting. The exhale, drawing the forearm down, palm comes up, drawing the left hand overhead. So now we're in extended side angle. Inhale, exalted. 
Exhale, we're coming through warrior two to find ourselves an extended side angle. Inhaling and exhaling. Three more. So hum on the breath. Last one. And then we're coming all the way back up to warrior two on the inhale. Hands come down. You need to bend through the left knee if it's not already bent and heel toe that leg to the front. Sitting back onto the chair if you were off. And then we're gonna heel toe that right leg round two. From there, hands to the knees, and we're just washing the knees from side to side, easing out any tension in the hips. From here, other side. So, depending on the support you need coming forward or back on your chair. Keeping that right leg rooting, you're gonna heel toe the left leg out towards the side any amount and that external rotation is different for all of us and the toes are facing in the same direction as the knee great place to stay right here rooting to rise and you can do exactly the same from here last or next option is we're sending that right leg out in front of you again that knee does not have to be straight Right leg can come out towards the side. Depending on the length of your bones and the chair you're on, option to slide off towards the right so the right hip is completely off the chair. And then we're taking that right leg out. Toes turn in to get that internal rotation. And the further in line with the left foot that right leg is, the more challenging the pose. A little bend in that right knee. Again, anything to make it feel easier and more comfortable in your body. Now we're rooting down through that foundation. We've got the feet and the seat. We've got that support under the pelvis or that left leg. Warrior two, we're taking the arms out, shoulder height. Rolling the shoulders back and down. Here we are, full warrior two, reaching through those fingertips, front ribs drawn in, and the last option here is gazing over those left fingertips. Warrior two, so hum on the breath. Now to add on, tune in, notice how much effort you're putting in here. Is it balanced with the ease? Do you need to soften into something because it feels like a lot? Or do you need to add some more um, awareness and tension into the pose to counteract the ease that you're feeling? Effort and ease. Warrior two on the left. If you're adding on, pulsing with the breath, turn that left palm up, right palm comes down, Inhaling, we're finding length through that left side. Exhale, back to warrior two. Inhaling and exhaling. Mm -hmm. Effort and ease. So hum on the breath. Staying here. Option to add on, this is the inhale. Exhale, we're taking the forearm down, palm spins up, wide collarbones, and over we come into extended side angle. Inhaling, ex um, exalted warrior two, exhaling, extended side angle. Notice if you're just hanging out here doing the movements, or if there's more awareness you can take to a particular area in your body to balance out that effort and ease. Inhaling and exhaling. A couple more on this side. 
noticing sensations, noticing your breath. This is the last one. And after the exhale, we're coming all the way back to warrior two. Hands come down. We're gonna bend through that right leg as if it's not already and heel toe that leg in. Sitting back onto the chair as you feel comfortable and then the left leg comes forward too. Hands on the knees and we're washing the knees from side to side, easing up through the hips there. When you're ready, coming back to rooting feet in seat to rise from there. Take a breath in. Exhale it out. Soften your gaze, even close your eyes and tune into the breath. So hum. Be aware of thoughts, feelings, how your body feels. Take it all into account with a curiosity. And when you're ready, floating the eyes open. And from here, coming down to the earth or support for you to finish off the class, gathering everything that you need and I'll meet you down there. Here we are down on the floor. So I'm gonna ask you to come all the way to your back. And if you need extra padding or softness underneath you, please go ahead and do that. Off to the work into the hips. I'm gonna just ease through those hips a little. So knees to the sky, feet to the floor. Maybe taking a moment to pick up your hips and readjust yourself so you feel comfortable here. If this feels like you're straining your throat from being here, please take a pillow underneath your head, bringing your head forward. Anything that you need here. And then come back to the breath. Maybe starting with a big breath in, holding for a beat. And then exhaling that out. Coming back to the so hum breath. And then from there, you're gonna draw that right knee in towards us. Give it a little hug. You can even circle through the ankle here a little if you like, one direction and then back in the opposite direction. Just noticing your breath. And then from here, we're taking the outer right ankle over onto the left thigh and drawing the right knee out. Now to make this a little easier, take the left heel further away from your seat and that's gonna ease the angle of the right hip. So finding a place that suits you, inhaling and exhaling, a little flex in that right ankle, it's gonna protect that right knee. And we're just gonna pulse here, pushing that knee down towards the end of our mat, just with the muscles of the leg. Notice what's happening in the hip, there'll be a point where you push it so far that the left hip lifts. So keep the pelvis neutral, and then we'll draw that knee down to a comfortable place where it's sustainable. Excellent place to be right here. Coming in to thread the needle, you can shoot your hands to the outside of that left leg and through that, um, the middle of the figure four. You can draw that left thigh in towards you, holding onto the thigh interlacing your hand to the back of that thigh or even depending on the length of your arms coming into the front of that left shin and here we are thread the needle effort and ease so hum on the breath the breath will tell you if there's too much effort here the breath will not be stable so again being honest with yourself if you're really curling up with the sit bone here, consider um, tilting the pelvis so that um, the sit bone could, or the sit bone, the tailbone, sorry, curling up the tailbone, if that's happening, 
allow the spine to be elongated so it's almost as if from the crown of your head down to the tailbone you're getting as much length as you possibly can there inhaling and exhaling steady and stable with the breath and then when you're ready releasing the left foot down if it was up and releasing the right knee again you're going to draw that in now the option here is to take half happy baby so keeping the left foot on the floor you're going to draw the right knee out towards your ribs this is a great place to stay right here a little flex in that right ankle again now your option is to take that right foot up towards the sky you can take the back of the thigh the outside of the shin or even the outside of that foot and we're drawing that knee down towards the armpit in a thigh brushing the rib cage inhaling and exhaling now this is a great place to be if you want to add on you can extend out that left leg half happy baby you can take the left arm out and the cactus or a T to ground through the upper body. Both feet flexed here if that left foot is off the floor or um, extended. So hum with the breath. So notice here the effort and the ease. From there, if that left leg is extended, you're going to draw it back in release that right um, foot so it's down by the seat and then with that left foot on the floor you're going to pick up the hips and shift them towards the whole right side extend out the left leg and we're drawing the right knee with the left hand over the body all the way to the left to get that twist right arm is in a cactus or a T and here we are now you can pulse here with the knee coming up and down towards the ceiling. You can pulse with the knee coming up towards your chest and down and away from you and find a sweet spot there that feels comfortable. And we're staying for a few breaths. Gaze can come over towards the right if that right shoulder is rooted and grounded. Gaze comes up to center when you're ready and the knee comes up to center too. Take both feet to the floor, knees to the sky and we're shifting the hips back to a central place. Any adjustments you need to make, go ahead and then we're drawing the left knee in. Circle through the ankle if you would like to, one direction. So hum on the breath and back in the opposite direction. Little flex in that foot, great place to stay right here. Or we're going to cross the outer left ankle onto the top of the right thigh. And here we are in a figure four, pulsing that left knee out and down, just with the musculature of your body that we're not using the arms here. We don't want to push anything. Notice where your pivot point is, where your pelvis starts to get involved and see if you can keep the pelvis neutral and then we draw the knee down option to stay here option to play with taking that right foot further away from your seat that's going to make the sensations easier if you want to add sensations we're drawing the right thigh in towards the chest any amount holding on to the thigh back of the knee front of the shin both feet are flexed if they're off the floor and we're breathing into that left hip, wherever it is that you're feeling it. It's going to be different for all of us. And again, consider rooting down your tailbone towards the earth. That's going to add sensation into that left hip. So hum, effort and ease here. Couple of breaths. And then when you're ready, the foot's coming down towards the floor, that right foot, if it was 
um, lifted. Left knee draws in towards your chest, option to stay here or draw it out towards the armpit, getting into the inner left groin. Option to stay here or take the foot up towards the ceiling. That left hand can come to the outer thigh, outer shin or outer foot, drawing the left knee down towards the armpit, the thigh brushing the ribs. Option to stay here or lengthen out the right leg. Both feet are flexed if that's happening. That's going to deepen in through the groin and through that left hip. So hum on the breath. Noticing if there's tension that you can soften. Effort and ease, always a balance. And you're welcome to stay here for as long as it's comfortable. We're gonna bend in through that right knee if it's not there already. Release that right foot if you had it. And then we're shifting the hips over towards the left side. Extending out with that right leg, long and straight. And the left knee comes over to the right, guided by the right arm all the way over as much as feels comfortable. Now you can pulse this. You can pulse with the knee up and down. You might find a sweet spot you really want to stay in because it feels comfortable in your body. And of course, you're always welcome to support that leg as it comes over. That left shoulder is grounded. You can take the gaze over the left shoulder. And here we are, steady breaths here. So hum, effort and ease. Where is it you're holding tension? You don't need to. Steady in the breath. You can stay here longer if you like. Well, the gaze comes to center and the knee comes up. Right knee to the sky, foot to the floor, and the left knee joins it, and we come back to a central place. From here, if there's anything else you want to do to finish off your practice, go ahead. Maybe draw those knees in and give yourself a little hug. You can come from here to constructive rest, feet wide, knees together, and you're still on your back. If you prefer to take relaxation on your side, on your belly, on your bed, on your couch, please go ahead and do that now. And as you get settled, I'm gonna come up to seated to guide you through relaxation. So again, there's no right or wrong here. There's no particular place for relaxation that is better than the other. The best place is the most comfortable place for your body. So the more comfort we have in the body, the less distraction we have in our mind. So we can start to tune in and let go. So wherever it is that you've chosen, Take a moment here and take a big breath in. Exhale it out and maybe soften or close your eyes as that's happening. Another few breaths just like that. Noticing once again that support underneath you and allow your body as much as you can to be supported here. Any adjustments, of course, that you need, an extra pillow or blanket, you go ahead and take what it is that you need. Allowing your body to be held here. And this is the balance of effort and ease. You've done a whole lot of effort for your practice, a lot of movement, a lot of tuning in. And this is where the ease is, full ease. You let your body surrender to that support underneath you. All the way down to your bones, feeling heavier. Your joints finding the ease. Tendons and ligaments start to soften. 
as they trust that support. Your inner organs releasing tension from around them. Muscles start to go soft and loose. Especially the muscles in your face, around your eyes and your jaw. And by now your breath will have settled, hopefully. No effort needed here, as effortless breath as possible. And with that effortless breath, simply tune in to the sound. And match the so hum mantra to the sound of your soft breaths as they come in and out. Allowing your thoughts also to release and relax. So hum. And every time your thoughts draw you away, offer yourself the mantra so hum as a peace offering to the thoughts of the doing, this is where your ease is, that only you can offer yourself ease. So hum. So hum. So hum. Without needing to change a thing, take your awareness into your whole body here, tip of your toes, to the crown of your head, to your fingertips. Tune into the effort that you feel, the tightness, the tension that may be present. And offer yourself ease here, softness. Tune into your mind, your thoughts. And then tune into your feeling, simply how you're feeling. And tuning into you, that support underneath you. All the places your body is held. And tune into your breath that's sustaining you.
so hum breath, starting to take a little longer breath in and out in your own time, no rush. slightly longer breath starting to bring your own organic movements into your fingers your toes maybe taking your head from side to side stay within the ease here very little effort lazy movements and from there starting to awaken in your own way stretching wide or long being conscious of the effort and the ease that you put in and keeping a quality of ease within you as you maybe roll to one side or wash those knees from side to side in your own time. Stay as you are or take the next few breaths to come to a place where you would like to finish your practice. And settle in. Finding that support underneath you, always there. Trusting it and sitting deeply or resting deeply into that. Hands coming into a gesture that suits you today for closing, whatever that may be. Take a big breath in, filling up with effort all the way to the top of your breath. Exhale out the mouth as you lower your chin down towards your chest just a little. Effort and ease. Considering maybe taking that awareness into your day as you move forward or your week ahead. Trying to balance out the effort and the ease. Tuning into your body, listening to what it needs. From my heart to yours, namaste. Thank you for joining me.